We're in an all new Dodge SUV. The last time we had a new Dodge SUV, I think may have been the Journey. We're in the Hornet, and this comes in loaded in the GT trim plus GT plus trim at $41,000. Today, I'm gonna to tell you if it's worth the price, so let's get under the hood. Oh, I love the, oh. Two liter turbocharged engine is the base engine here. It's got 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, made it to the nine speed ZF transmission. Also, all wheel drive is standard. I'm seeing about 23 miles per gallon. You might be able to get a smidgen better than that. There's also a plug-in hybrid coming for this next year with a smaller engine, uh, like a 15 kilowatt hour battery. Should be able to get you fully 30 miles of electric range. You can also get that powertrain now in the Tonale and many markets around the world. And speaking of the Tonale, that is an Alfa Romeo. And this is the exact same thing as that car in Dodge Trimmings. I also forgot to mention that this is also built in Naples, Italy. We live in Naples, Florida. So it's, and your uncle's stationed over in uh, Naples, Italy. So it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that we're getting all these congruencies uh, with this vehicle. But yeah, built alongside of the Tonale yeah. in the Alfa Romeo plant in Italy. It's pretty cool. Check this out. This is the new Dodge badge. It's just a, it's like a, a slanted couple marks there. It's very sporty, very aggressive. No one's going to know you're driving in a Dodge when they see this. I feel like it's a very, I don't know, incognito sort of badging. But the design is really cool. The headlights remind me a lot of uh, if you see a charger out on the road, just kind of compact and minimalized. And then the hood scoops or vents, you could call them, they are functional. They do bring air into the, the like, engine compartment. I just think they look really cool and really sporty. We got some wind today. Let's come around to the side here, Cass. We're gonna talk about the side styling. This thing, like from the front, it looks pretty aggressive and you see it from the side. It's very sleek. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, maybe some Jaguar vi vehicles. Obviously the Tonale has the exact same side profile as this. We have massive 20 inch wheels. This has the track package as well as the tech package. And we have a little Hornet badge here on the side. Like this thing is tiny. Um, it's priced kind of like a compact crossover, but it is more in terms of the size of a subcompact like uh, HRV or Corolla Cross, for example, but has way more power than those vehicles. So we have actually Brembo brakes inside of those 20 inch wheels on this track package as well. We do have adaptive variable suspension on here, a couple modes, and we have a Chapman rear suspension that is very unique. I don't know if I've ever reviewed a car with the rear suspension like that. We've seen them in like racing history passes on Lotus vehicles. So up front is more of a traditional McPherson strut setup, but the unique setup to this actually makes it drive much more aggressively. Now the rear taillights, are amazing. They, this does give you a light bar when the lights are on. I'll put the B-roll in there for you guys. There's no Dodge logo really on the back to give this away. It looks very upscale. It almost has Porsche uh, rear taillight design. And we have Hornet on the left and then GT on the right. And then the RT will be the plug-in hybrid. No noticeable exhaust tips back here, as you guys can see. Uh, and then we lift this up. It is automated here. We have about 27 cubic feet of space inside. It does come with a little tonneau cover that doesn't roll up or anything, it's fixed. I just removed it because it's a lot easier to get the car seats strapped in without that. Um, but there is a big, like a big amount of space in here. I feel like it's plenty for a vehicle this size. Just keep in mind when you lift this up and you have a bag on it, it completely falls apart. So the cool thing is once you get this reset, you can lift this and you have these little pegs that stick out and holds this up for you. There is no spare tire in here. You have to pay 350 bucks if you want this spare tire. And we're already talking about 40, almost $42,000 at that point. So fold that down, throw the bag back in. Let's go ahead and move around. Uh, you got to hold this down because if you press, it doesn't, doesn't do anything, which is kind of annoying. So press and hold and then it beeps at you to close it. We got the kiddos in the back. It's a little tight for them, but it's doable. They like putting their feet up into the rear seats, for example. And um, there's a couple USBs back there. I fit back there fairly fine. I didn't have any head issues or headroom issues. My knees were maybe that far, like I'm six foot one. So it's not, I don't, don't put dolls back there for too long, essentially. But we do have vents back there, which is more of an upscale feature and shows more of its uh, Tonale DNA back there as well with the USB charging port. So I'll meet you in the front seat cast and we'll go over the inside. Okay, so like I mentioned before, this has the tech package, which gives us a 360 camera. I'll pull, the, 
put this in reverse here, you can see it pop up. It's pretty high resolution. We used it to back out of our driveway just a second ago. The GT Plus trim also gives you this 14 speaker Harman Kardon stereo that sounds really, really good. I'm very impressed. Most of the sound does come from this area, but it does sound good. I'll give it that. Now, at first glance, these little knobs kind of remind you of volume knob or tuning knobs. They actually control the air. Your volume controls here, which is kind of funny. I was looking around for it while I was driving this. I didn't I, I, one of the first things I do when I get cars, I just drive them. I don't study them too much. So when I'm driving, I couldn't find the volume knob. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's literally because the shifter covers up the little scrolly wheel for the volume. I know I have volume control here, but there's nothing better than a true volume dial for audio control. So, you know, it is ergonomic when you think about it. It's kind of how Mazda has their little volume knobs. And anyways, I digress. We have a wireless charger, charging Cassie's phone. We have USB-C and USB-A up here, just like we do for the rear passengers. Couple really deep cup holders. I appreciate they're not shallow. It's gonna keep your drinks in place. Um, also a very deep, but small uh, storage space here. The tech package gives us some other things as well, like lane keep assist, radar cruise control, and also gives you uh, intelligent parking sensors. The thing is, they don't work in here. When you start the car up, it gives you warning saying you need to take it to the dealer. So, which is a bit concerning because I was expecting it to go off and it's pulled into the garage. Luckily, this thing is so compact, it fit in my garage very easily. Had plenty of room on the front and back end and parking sensors on a vehicle that's this small. Maybe not the most necessary, but anyways, you have a 360 camera to assist you if they aren't working with this setup. Now, standard on all models is the 10 inch touchscreen here. I have wireless Android Auto. You're gonna have wireless Apple CarPlay, and you also have a 12 inch digital screen back here, which I quite like. It's really high resolution, good contrast to it, good colors. It's not the most customizable, but it works really, really well. Climate controls just a bunch of switches up here, which is fine with me because it gives me manual fan control. It gives me temperature control uh, with this up and down. Like it's very functional. And if you need to use the heated and ventilated or not ventilated, just the heated seats, this track package gives you the Alcantara seats, but you can also get leather seats on the GT Plus trim that doesn't have the track package. Anyways, heated seat here and heated steering wheel. And I, it is also on the passenger side. Okay, so it's just, you have to go, I can't turn your seat on from this side, I have to go to your side to turn on the heated seat. I wish it was all kind of in one spot, yeah. but it is what it is. One other thing is that this particular model does not have a sunroof. So you're paying nearly $42,000, don't have a sunroof. I have great headroom driving the new Hornet, it's actually a lot of fun to drive. I don't have a lot of twisties here in Florida. You pretty much have to catch a green arrow at speed <laughs> to take a turn. And the torque vectoring works really well on it. Um, and you feel really connected to the road. Uh, from my understanding, this is exact same steering wheel with the Dodge badge as what you have in the Alfa Romeo. And you feel the road really, really well. Now this, as far as I'm aware, shares a similar platform to the Jeep Compass, which we just reviewed. Uh, this is a completely different performance machine. They both have turbocharged four cylinder ends, but this one is much more potent. Foot, foot down and I, it double downshifts, but it has a lot more torque, a lot more power. And it like, it, you just feel glued to the road compared to the Jeep, which was more of a luxury, luxurious kind of removed experience. Uh, the brakes in here feel a lot better too over the Jeep as well. And it's probably, actually it's not probably, it is, why, what is, why is this MDX going so slow? It is by far the best performing subcompact crossover that I've driven that's not the Kona N. We're gonna take this fairly fast. There's a rock in the road. And it just feels so planted. Easily putting down that power. Now the nine speed is not the most rewarding. Um, it sometimes uh, can bog down when you get off the throttle. Uh, but it's it's not, it's just okay. The engine I would say is an A and the transmission's more like a B or a C. And the, the brakes are like an A, the handling's an A, all wheel drive system's an A, the steering's an A. It's just kind of the, the, the transmission's kind of like the weak, weak spot of this whole like performance minded Hornet. In terms of comfort, my arms rest on both armrests fairly well. This is kind of high though. I wish it was a little bit lower. Visibility is, okay the the windshield is raked pretty heavily 
almost like a Prius. Like I feel like it's really aggressive backwards, but that's gonna give this more of a, an exciting exterior design when you look at it from the inside, outside. Now looking through the rear window back there, there's not a lot of visibility, especially I have the head, headrest raised just a little bit so I could pass the uh, car seat straps through them as well. Just not a lot of visibility back there, unfortunately. Um, blind spot monitor on here, of course, is standard, so I do appreciate that. Now you have a little button here at the bottom of the steering wheel which awakens sport mode. Um, it just makes you know, the, the mapping a little bit more aggressive and the transmission a little bit more eager to downshift. And we also, and as we come to a stop, we also have the start-stop engine feature in here, which isn't very abrupt in my uh, testing, even though with the AC making the engine cut in more often than normal, uh, it's, it doesn't shake the car that much. It's fairly smooth overall for a start-stop engine technology. Now, even though it has an electronic brake hold, I don't see any option in here for auto brake hold, and that's where it'll apply the brakes when you're at a stop. But hey, I think we're, uh, we're just gonna take this real quick. We're in sport mode. <laughs> There's like 60 miles an hour right there. Like it's properly quick up to about 35, 40, and we have it loaded with two adults and two kids and car seats and getting on the brakes heavy here. Like, it has all the performance I could pretty much ask for in a subcompact crossover that isn't trackable like, you know, we talked about the Kona N earlier. But this is a much more livable car than the Kona N. It has way more interior space and passenger space as well in the second row. And the, while it has a sporty suspension, you do feel the road, it doesn't ever feel like way too harsh and stiff uh, like the Kona N, for example. So I've really enjoyed my time with this little Hornet. I like how it looks. Cass, what are your impressions about the vehicle overall? I like the styling. I think it's unique. It is unique, you know, yes. You can easily reach one or two kids in the back. It has room for car seats, which is nice. It definitely mm -hmm. has room for a stroller. Yep. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the styling is unique with like the push buttons. I, I don't know if I've seen that. Oh, like the switches yeah. here? Like, it reminds yeah. me of like a piano or something. I don't know. It's just yeah, it is kind of Different. like a piano key. Yep, you see it. You've seen it in a few cars out there. Lexus LC500 has more upscale switches like this, but the new Prius actually has switches like this, oh, which really? you'll see funny. when we get one one day. Yeah. But yeah. No, we both really like it. We think it's really cute. It's cute. Uh, I love the Hornets. The, little the Hornet. Hornet yeah, so you cute. like the Hornet badge more than I do. Yeah, I think it's so cute. You know, I. It's very shiny and happy. Um, <laughs> but there is a package which is completely overpriced from Dodge that blacks out these badges oh. uh, for like $2,000. I'm just like, no, you can that. get it, you can get them blacked out or plastic dipped or what, or whatever uh, somewhere else for way cheaper. So don't, don't recommend getting that package unless they like throw it in for you or something. Okay. Um, but like it, it comes down to price and you're able to get this, Dodge starts advertising this it's the most powerful compact crossover, whatever, under $30,000. Now, here's the thing, how we have it equipped, even though I like the brakes, how they feel, I like the suspension here uh, with the adaptive variable setup. It's just, it's over $40,000 and that is competing with much bigger crossovers. So I see the appeal of it if you're really into performance, but here's the thing, skip the the tech package, skip the track package, try to get this vehicle, maybe with a sunroof as well for around $35,000. I wouldn't recommend necessarily much more over that unless you get a really, really good deal. But if you're spending around $40,000, this is a way better vehicle than what we tested with the Jeep Compass. At around $40,000, we also felt like that was way too much money for what they're offering. But yeah, I'm very impressed with this Hornet. It drives great. Wish the transmission was a little bit better. I know the Tonale in different markets has the dual clutch option, so that would have been a dream. But it is what it is, and no vehicle is perfect. In terms of handling, acceleration, all-wheel drive situations, like, and, and cuteness, I really, really like this vehicle. So uh, signing out from the all-new Dodge Hornet. Thanks, Dodge, for sending this to us. I, as far as I know, we're one of the, like, this vehicle just came out. So we're one of the first... Uh, people to get our hands on this and test it out on, on just daily everyday streets uh, that's different than like a press media drive but i gotta cut myself off thank you Cass, for filming thanks kids for being really good during this drive holy smokes i'm so grateful and uh, i'm gonna enjoy the rest of our drive here with the hornet uh, for the small time that we've been given it all right thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed it hit the like button i'll catch you in the next one peace